Today we've got a story of a crazy entitled parent claiming somebody's doing illicit substances on the bus. We'll get into that in a bit, but first, steal my identity, I guess? Let me start with a TLDR. The entitled parent is my own mother, and she used my identity to open a bank account to hide funds from the IRS. Imagine a boomer, albeit a younger one, crossed with a mega Karen, a narcissist of the first order. When I was 15 or so, my mother opened a bank account at her credit union in my name, made herself a joint on said account. I had no idea this existed. I was 15. I didn't even have a driver's license or a job. In my 20s, an out of work, college dropout, as I couldn't get financial aid due to her making too much money, I got a very angrily worded letter from the IRS about unpaid taxes, about how cash appeared in my account and was transferred to another account after taxes should have been applied. My out of work brain was like, what money? Cue months of phone calls and letters eventually ending with, you're committing a crime, and me sobbing on the phone with the IRS going, I have no idea what's going on. Spoiler alert, my mother was using the account to try to dodge taxes. And it worked when I was a minor, but at 20, Uncle Sam wanted his cut. It was months of phone calls and letters, all fielded while mom was still at work, cause I was a college dropout and not in school or employed, so I was home to answer them. I was aggressively applying for any job within driving distance for a busted up 96 Ford Explorer, which got 10 miles per gallon on a good day. Eventually I got elevated to an IRS agent high up enough in the hierarchy to give me a straight answer. There was a bank account in my name, with my mother as joint on the account, who knew my social security number, date of birth, her maiden name, the name of my first pet, and the name of the street I grew up on? Cause yeah, she should know those things. She's my mother. I told the IRS, do whatever you need to do to close this account and here's my mother's contact info. She has no idea to this day how the IRS found out her scam and I will take that secret to the grave. Think 15,000 or so that she owed in back taxes that she begrudgingly paid out of her nest egg that she had been building up in my name. Freak you, Karen. I don't care if I'm written out of the will. Not that she knows what Reddit is, but hey, miracles happen. I don't know what OP's relationship with their mom was like throughout their life, but just imagine finding this out after all these years that your mom has been doing this behind your back using you, your social security number, your information. I mean, next, OP would probably have to go and check and make sure that they didn't take out a loan in OP's name either. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you can't get enough of hearing about these entitled parents, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below? That said, our next story is, my mom kicked me out of the house over family drama that she and my sister started. A little background, my sister has always been more like my mom, and I've always been more like my dad. I realize I've always been the golden child in my dad's eyes, and it's made my sister jealous, but she never took it out on me until yesterday. My parents got divorced around four years ago, and up until now, none of our family arguments have gotten this intense. I'll keep it short because it's a really long story. Basically, yesterday, my mom was talking to the neighbor, and the topic of my dad's new girlfriend came up. My mom asked me if I'd met her and I said yes, to which she responded by straight up asking me, I'm prettier, right? Now, the only reason I didn't respond with yes right away is because I was baffled that she would even ask me that. I then refused to respond because I didn't like being put on the spot like that. When I returned to the house of a family friend I'm currently house-sitting for, my sister texted me asking what was wrong with me and demanded to know why I said dad's girlfriend was prettier than mom, which I never even explicitly said. I tried to explain civilly but firmly that I was tired of being her and mom's weasel and providing them with information about my father and his girlfriend. I also said I'm tired of being their scapegoat and getting blamed when things go awry. My sister got angry and responded by telling me things like, freak you and knock yourself out maybe you'll fall off your high horse then my mom came to the house yes she actually invaded my space again and demanded to talk to me called the freaking police on me and ultimately decided she was going to kick me out of the house shut off my phone service and make me move in with my dad my dad came over last night along with my aunt his little sister who's in town and they brought me dinner and comforted me for a little while Today I did some things to distract myself from the fact that my life is falling apart at the seams. 
but as of right now, it's putting me back in the same dark place I was last night. My mom is still keen on kicking me out, and I don't know how long it'll take before she realizes and admits she was wrong for putting me in this position. I'm not holding my breath because she's a bit of a narcissist and doesn't like to apologize for anything, even when it is undoubtedly her fault, and this time it certainly is. I just hope it doesn't get much worse from here. Disclaimer, I'm 17 years old and just graduated high school. I start college in the fall. Second disclaimer, my dad and his girlfriend don't live together, and as far as I know, aren't planning on getting married, they just hang out often. I mean, it sounds to me like one side of your parents are actually supportive. I think OP should try to lean more into moving in with their father, or just especially putting a little bit more distance between them and their mom, who OP says is not treating them the way they should. Our next story is, Karen preaches to my child. My eldest is having a playdate with a friend, and her mom comes to pick her up. I'm in my bedroom with Street Light Manifesto playing and my boyfriend watching the kids. He comes to get me, saying Mommy Dearest wants to talk to me about my music and rolls his eyes. So I go, and she immediately starts with the, You let your children listen to such blasphemy? And I tell her, It's not really blasphemy if we don't believe in God. She then gets so outraged that we need to see the light. So I snap back at her, leave my house immediately or I will have my boyfriend assist you in finding your way to the exit. So I send her an email the next morning, hi Emily, this is Fema. I'm very concerned about your insistence on my preaching to my children and do not appreciate you insulting me and my children, especially not in front of my child. I would very much like for you to keep your religion to yourself and your family. If you find what you need in your God, that is wonderful for you and I'm truly happy for you, but we do not share your beliefs and very much do not want you pushing your beliefs on us, and especially not our children who do not yet possess the critical faculties to understand such difficult concepts. As a courtesy, I will refrain from playing atheist music while your child is over. I got a message back. Fema, I'm very sorry for my attitude the other day. My mother's currently in the hospital and I wasn't having a great day. I understand you have a difference of beliefs and will respect that in the future. Thank you for coming to me instead of just attacking me. So I think it's settled and I let my daughter go to her play date despite my boyfriend wanting to chaperone. I should have let him. When I picked up my child we start driving home and I ask what they did and if she had fun and she says, we watched a movie about Jesus. Luckily, my child already knows about Christianity and that they have their beliefs, but that we, mommy and daddy, do not share those beliefs. But now I have to figure out how I'm going to answer the but why questions to a five-year-old that I was hoping I could put off until she was better equipped to understand apologia and its critiques because I don't have any real issues with Christians or Christianity that aren't based in logical failings of their arguments for the existence of God. I became an atheist because I studied philosophy. So I sent another email to Emily. Emily, this is Fema. Please explain to me why you thought it was appropriate after our last conversation to proselytize to my child? Response. Fema, I'm sorry. I figured you wouldn't mind giving you a spouse the virtues of atheism in your home that I at least provide a counter to your blasphemy. Children should be allowed to decide whichever path they wish on their own. My response, Emily, thank you for responding. I will no longer be letting my child over to your house unsupervised and your child is no longer welcome over at ours unsupervised. I will be taking further actions as necessary through the school I advise you but weaponize your child in this and allow them to continue to be friends. However, should you fail this, I will seek a no contact order and go to the police to report your harassment. Any further correspondence can go through my boyfriend, as frankly you don't want my patience to run any thinner than it already is. His contact information is attached and I have him cc'd to this thread now. I think the sad part here is it's kind of interfering with the kids and just not allowing them to have the full child experience that they should. People in the comments were recounting their times being involved with Jehovah's Witnesses and talking about how they couldn't have a certain friend anymore because they had invited that friend to a birthday party and Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe in such a thing. Another person said that they had to sit off to the side in the library while all the other kids enjoyed the birthday cupcakes one kid brought in. It just seems honestly a bit ridiculous to me personally. 
Our next story is starting to regret moving to this neighborhood. So this is my wife's story. My wife's been a stay-at-home mom since the birth of my son five and a half years ago. Recently, she's been feeling a bit off as she wants to be contributing to our income but hasn't been able to make anything work with caring for the kids during the day. Our neighborhood has a community pool and while she was teaching our son to swim about a month ago, one of her friends mentioned that with all the kids in our neighborhood, she could probably offer lessons and get quite a few people to sign up. She worked as a lifeguard in high school and had given lessons to children for a couple of years and knew she could do it. She made a post on the community Facebook page and ended up getting about 20 kids signed up for lessons, both group and private, before having the HOA reach out saying that swim lessons cannot happen as they would not be covered by the current insurance. This is a long story in its own right. So my wife reached out to everyone who signed up to let them know that lessons have to at the very least be delayed, but most likely permanently cancelled. In addition, she removed her advertisement and posted about how lessons were indefinitely suspended until the issues with the HOA are finalized. On Saturday, she took my son to the pool to continue his lesson. Shortly after they started, a mom showed up with her three-year-old, saw my wife teaching my son, and having seen the original post offering lessons, told her son to join my wife in the pool and get a lesson. So my wife had a little kid walking down the steps towards her, which she thought nothing of, until he went to take a step down which would have put his head underwater. She stopped him and asked where his parents were, and he pointed to his mom who was getting set up on one of the reclined poolside chairs. My wife went up to her with her son and let her know that he just tried to walk right into the pool all on his own and asked if he knew her son was going in alone. Oh, that's fine. He's here for his lesson. This shocked my wife and she told the mom that all lessons had been canceled and that she didn't recognize the mom as one of the parents who signed her kid up for the lessons. She said, oh, well, I can just pay you later. I want him signed up now. So, again, my wife explained that the HOA had made it clear that no lessons could take place, and that we'd been threatened with legal action if my wife offered the lessons. Well, you're only teaching one now, pointing at my son, so you can help my son too. The HOA won't find out. So my wife explained that she was just teaching our son, and we were not going to risk the HOA coming after us to teach her son. It's not that big a deal, he can just watch and learn. It became pretty clear that she was not going to take no for an answer, so my wife decided to leave and come back later. As she was leaving, the mom yelled out, I can't believe you'll give lessons to a white boy, but not my son. This got quite a few looks, which actually turned out really well for us, as my wife informed the HOA of what happened in case the woman decided to tell the HOA that my wife was moving forward with lessons after being told not to. The woman did reach out, and we gave names of a couple of the other families who were at the pool at the time who corroborated my wife's story. We've now had two pretty crappy interactions with community members in the last couple of months. Hopefully this doesn't become a trend. That was incredibly smart to inform the HOA of what's going on ahead of time. This could have come down very badly on OP and they could have gotten their little revenge for feeling so slighted. So thankfully OP's wife was two steps ahead. Our next story is coming to terms with the fact that my mother is high on the narcissism scale. When I was in college in early 20s, I, like many, grew and evolved into a different person than my parents. When I graduated college, I moved out of state. I would miss my parents a lot, but when they would come to visit me every once in a while, I would become so irritable and difficult with them. When they left, I'd feel so guilty about my attitude while they were there with me, I couldn't understand it. Now that I'm older and wiser and have started therapy, I've had an epiphany. My mother is a narcissist. When I became an adult, she found it hard to respect me as an adult, and that's why I became so irritable every time she'd come to visit. Grandiosity and arrogance, my parents are very religious. They raised me to believe that we were better than everyone else because we found the one true religion, and anyone who wasn't as devout as us was immature and not someone to waste my time with. As I got older, I became friends with people who grew up differently than me. When my parents would come to visit, my mom would dismiss these friends or treat them poorly. Now I can see that she's hypercritical of anyone who lives differently than her or holds a different opinion than her. Entitlement. It is my mom's way or the highway. Having a baby? Gotta have the shower she wants. 
Christmas, everyone is going to her church and doing the activities she wants after. Don't even think about visiting your in-laws for the holidays. She gets first dibs. Giving birth? She will cry and beg the nurses to let her in the room even though you told her you only wanted your spouse in the room and after the fact tell you how selfish you are for blocking her from meeting her grandchild the moment she or he entered the world. True story. Lack of empathy. To the above, it doesn't matter if you're tired, you've been working all day, you're going through a hard time, she doesn't want to hear it. You better show up where she wants and when she wants with a smile on your face and no complaints. Don't expect her to put herself in the shoes of others. She can only relate to things she's personally been through. Contemptuousness. She's going to make condescending remarks, and if you want to keep the peace, you best learn how to accept them and move on. A little overweight? Didn't have time to do your hair? She'll let you know. Ordering something at the restaurant that she thinks sounds gross? She'll say so in front of the server. Setting a boundary? She'll lash out with insults and attacks on your character. Emotional immaturity. Don't expect her to be able to have an adult conversation or accept boundaries. The moment you try to have a conversation about anything real, she'll tell you it's no big deal and you're such a drama queen. Honorable mentions. 1. Never asking you one question about your life when you're together or speak over the phone but will tell you every minute detail of hers and will expect you to remember. 2. Berating you behind closed doors but bragging about your achievements on her Facebook, being only concerned about appearances and photo ops when you're together, unconcerned with a real connection or making memories. 3. Treating you like a child even though you're a full-blown adult with a career, a house, bills and taxes and a child. Anyone else tired and beaten down like me? Finally putting two and two together about my mom has me feeling so discouraged and helpless. I'm not sure where to go from here. I think the saddest part is when you've been exposed to this behavior since a very young age, you kind of become a people pleaser slash pushover to that parent. And even now as a fully grown adult, it's hard for you to assert yourself and put your foot down and say you're not going to put up with it anymore or by God cut them off. Our next story is, why do I have to scrape the bottom of the barrel for respect? Gen Z. I'm 20 years old, in my second year of college. I finally reconnected with my mother who I haven't spoken with since my parents divorced in 2016. I called her up through a relative and I was happy to talk to her and catch up on things. I love her but my mom talks to me like a toddler in a coochie coochie coo tone. Doting, coddling. I feel like I'm lower than her and I'm not being listened to. She's clearly acting sweet and polite, but the fact that she doesn't speak to me with maturity is clearly a sign she has no respect for me. I say yes please and thank you. I tell her I love her, but I have an underlying animosity towards her. This is the same thing I was avoiding when I'm ready to snap and disrespect her, which I'm always holding back from doing. She clearly doesn't appreciate that I'm holding back. I am always going to be grateful to her and love her because of how much pain she went through trying to raise me and my siblings. Her problem is she just bowls over me, all while saying polite nothings as if it changes anything. I tell her she's crushing my neck. She has the personality of a typical soccer mom with no self-awareness. I feel embarrassed when I bring her around my friends and my girlfriend because she infantilizes me in public and in private. When I was younger I accepted it because I knew I was the youngest of my three siblings. Now that I'm grown, it's a problem. She's the better of my two parents but she still has no boundaries and it's completely disrespectful. All I want is advice on how to handle the disagreement in a mature way. Most people in my family are upper middle class. My two step siblings are millennials and watch Broadway and Disney movies. They're great and they support me. I don't have a lot of support from them though because they're similar. Arguing with her seems hopeless. When I was younger, I just assumed her behavior was because I was young. I cut her off for a long time and gave her space to breathe. I didn't expect this to continue. She just talks to me as if I don't have a mind of my own, constantly trying to make jokes that are completely nonsensical, and I feel this strong, cringe feeling in my stomach every time she talks to me. She calls me on the phone at the most inconvenient times. I feel like she treats me like a pet dog. 
When I tell her to step back and show me respect, then she immediately switches to this rude, snappy attitude where she starts brooding, just like a five-year-old. She gives me no respect. She loves me, but she has zero respect for me. I would maybe just consider being very transparent and blunt, that you don't like being treated this way and if it cannot stop, it doesn't matter how brooding they can get, you're not gonna put up with it and you will start distancing yourself again. You're a grown but adult and you deserve to be treated and respected as such. Our next story is my mom threatening to sell my Nintendo Switch because I linked a Nintendo account to it and now I'm scared that she actually will. This is not the first time posting to the subreddit and it certainly won't be the last. So what happened was, I wanted to link a Nintendo account to my Switch. She got mad at me, yelled at me, and drove off when my dad stood up for me. Well recently I did link it and it worked pretty well for about 2 months or so, until my brother saw me on the eShop and told my mom. I'm not blaming my brother, he's still in elementary school. What happened was, she got mad, yelled at me, and walked off, went snooping on my Switch and found that I'd been on YouTube. She doesn't like the fact that I use YouTube for entertainment. She once tried to delete my Google account, but failed because I changed my password from when she helped me set it up. She never told me this and doesn't know I know. I only know because I got an email about it and I didn't sign into my account around that time. Anyway, she then told me that she's going to sell my Switch. Even though I bought it, the law is on her side. I am under 18 and after doing some research, I found a sketchy law that said people have no rights under 18 so yeah, she can do that. I had enough money to buy it, but she tried to gaslight me into saying that I spent a hundred extra dollars during summer vacation. I didn't. She then proceeded to not sell it, but forced me to tell her my Nintendo account password. What should I do? I really don't understand what her problem is with you having a Nintendo account. I also don't really understand the issue with YouTube. Considering it sounds like the father is the one supportive parent here, I would try to continue to open a discussion with him and, I don't know, try to get behind him a little bit more. Our next story is, entitled mummy angry I'm doing laundry. I just bought one of those small portable washing machines, the kind you might use in a caravan or in my case, an apartment with no plumbing for a washing machine. I was hanging my bed sheets over my error in the window yesterday. The sun comes through the front windows early in the morning, so by the time I got up today, it was dry. As I was hanging my duvet cover, which for context is a multicolored pastel colors, striped on one side, and flowers on the other side, I heard through my very obvious open window, Ugh, stay away girls, it's one of those LGBTers again. I don't want you getting any ideas. I glare at her through my window and lower my head to the open part of the window. I said, I'm doing my laundry in my house, Karen. That just so happens to be colored stripes. Not every color on earth is gay, you know. And even if it was, why would you care? Points to her tie-dye leggings and gives her the, are you dumb, stare. Her daughters, by the way, were literally wearing rainbow socks and pastel-looking jean short things. So like... What? She then stops walking, turns to me and goes, You're spreading the gay agenda. I reply, I'm doing my freaking laundry, and slam the window shut. I then head outside to find that, in the short few seconds of this particular interaction, maybe three or four people are just standing watching her rant and rave about my freaking laundry. I get outside in the tiny butt front yard, and she's waving her arms around, telling everyone how I'm spreading a toxic agenda by doing my laundry inside my own home. I'm going to ask you to leave or the police will be involved. I've done nothing to anyone. I'm literally just doing my laundry in my own home and you're screaming at me for something that doesn't even exist. If you want though, I can show you the pride flag that hangs in my front room or maybe I should hang my bright pink polka dot panties up alongside my skirt. I'm 25 male for your information. The look on her face was if I just told her I eat babies. I gestured her to leave, the same way you might do with a badly behaved dog, and she did actually leave, still muttering her rants and nonsense, but she left. Her daughters were bright red in the face staring at their phone, clearly wanting to just disappear and not exist anywhere near their mother. Is this what it's come to? People are so homophobic or transphobic that they see colored stripes now and they immediately jump to some great agenda. 
Is human rights really some great big agenda? Or is it common sense? Our next story is, Entitled Dad Claims I'm Doing Drugs on the Bus. So a little bit of background on me, I have a bunch of health issues, and that means I have a lot of medications. The important one here is my anti-sickness meds on Dancitron, Zofran. Now, due to issues here in the UK, getting hold of some of my medications have been a nightmare. My anti-sickness has been the hardest to get, so what little I do have, I am heavily rationing until I can finally get it again. The other important thing to note is that for a while now, it's been coming in a pill bottle and not a blister. Here in the UK, that's very unusual. Another thing that's important to mention is that it is pretty clear I'm disabled and I have a walking stick, and I wear a sunflower lanyard. Also, my face is dropped on the left due to a stroke I had. Basically, if you look at me, you know full well I'm disabled. The last thing is 3rd of June is my birthday. To be honest, the day kinda sucked. And birthdays are fairly important in my family, especially mine as I've spent so many in hospital. So I was on the bus today and I'm already in a pretty foul mood. I had gone to the pharmacy in hopes of getting my meds, no luck. I'm feeling very sick, I'm in a lot of pain, I'm tired. And to top it all off, it's my birthday and I can't eat my birthday cake without feeling even worse. So, needless to say, I was close to tears. I was sat on the bus in the disabled seats, head against the window, music in my ears, trying not to cry. One of my earphones ran out of charge, so I went into my bag to grab the case and switch to wired earphones. Just as I was doing this, this dad got on the bus with a small child. I paid them no mind as I dug through my bag until he heard him clear his throat. My child needs to sit there, he said, looking at me. Now, the bus wasn't busy at that point, and the seat next to me was as well as the other disabled seats. I looked at him in confusion and I said, I'm sorry sir, but as you can see, I'm already sat here and it's very clear I need them. He's welcome to sit next to me, or you can pick any of the other seats. Now, I could have absolutely have been nicer about it, but as I said, I was in no mood. He just huffed at me and sat on the other seats. All seemed well until the child started complaining he wanted to sit on the left side where I was. The dad ignored the kid whilst the kid kept moaning. Now at this point, my sickness had gotten a lot worse. So I reluctantly grabbed my anti-sickness meds from my bag to take one. It has one of those child safety caps on the ones where you push down and turn at the same time. I really don't like these caps, but whatever, get on with it. I was struggling to get it pushed down. But before I could complete this, my meds were grabbed out of my hand. The man went marching to the driver. He started shouting I was taking drugs on the bus and I should be arrested. The driver pulled over and got out his cab. At this point, everything got far too much and I burst into tears. The driver, an older man who knows me, said, M isn't taking drugs, they're taking their medications. At this point, a lady had sat down next to me and wrapped her arm around me. I was just crying and crying and crying. Everything had gotten too much. Friends didn't wish me a happy birthday. I wasn't feeling well. I just want my anti-sickness meds. I want a day where I'm not unwell, especially on my birthday. As if to pile on top of it, the kind lady who was hugging me smelt of the soap my grandma used. So on top of it, I started missing her and wishing it was her hugging me on my birthday. The entitled dad realized how wrong he was and how much he screwed up, but still tried to worm his way out. I don't really know what he said, I just know that he was trying to make excuses. The bus driver grabbed my meds off of him, told him to get off and grab my water out my bag, and helped get the cap off. I took my meds, but still was very upset as you can imagine. Fortunately, bus driver knows my auntie, so he called her and got her to come and pick me up to take me home. I just feel for OP because through and through, it was one of those days where it just seems like nothing is going for you. I'm definitely not saying that I can relate exactly to what OP went through, but I think I can say that we've all had one of those days where it just seems like nothing is going right, and honestly, stuff way smaller than what this entitled dad was doing would be enough to at least make us want to burst out into tears. I hope for OP's sake that the rest of their birthday got a little bit more better. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another absolutely crazy entitled parent story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.